Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Our founding fathers wanted to set this republic on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ and His Word. And, and to think anything else, and to begin to pull out these little nuances about one particular founding father's sin and, and another's and another to try to nitpick it apart, my goodness, that's like saying, well, Tom, you can't preach because you're a sinner too. Well, no kidding. But their direction and their guidance and their format and their blueprint was good and it was godly and we need to get back to that. Ben Franklin, he wasn't the perfect guy, that's for sure. If you want to throw some stones, man, I can pick out a few. But he was a very wise man. One of the smartest men. I mean, when you go back and read some of these people's writings, it just amazes me of the wisdom and the visionaries that they were. Listen to what he says in 1787. Only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. Do you hear those words? Only a virtuous people, people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have need of masters. It's the same thing in the, in the church. Only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. When we talk about freedom, and I heard us clap about freedom from sin as, as Jay read those wonderful scriptures. Do you realize what that means? It's not freedom to sin. It's freedom from sin. And only a virtuous people are capable of that. A people who begin to share these blessed uh, commands of God and these values of God with their children are capable of true freedom. And I ask us, guys, gals, where are those leaders today in our nation? We're going back to Kenya, Lord willing, in uh, February next year. And our focus is going to be on this school with these young people. And to get them those, that moral foundation based upon a religion. Because they have government leaders. They have a government in Kenya. And almost all of it is corrupt. I pick up papers there. All kinds of papers when I'm there. Every single page is full of corruption. They need people who are virtuous. Leading their people. And it's going to be the young people that are going to come up and they're going to be educated, yes, in statesmanship, in politics, in science, in math, but also in the Word of God. That's how you really change a nation and change our world. So pray for that vision, but also pray for it here. Let's not just take for granted our water and our food and the order and the prosperity that we have in this country. But let's also change the moral fabric of this country. Which brings me to the point of our mission, our vision. Our vision to be a community of faith introducing people to Jesus and helping them fall in love with Him. If we have people on Wall Street who are deeply in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, do you think they're going to be stealing $50 billion from people's pension plans? Do you think that we need external government regulation when you've got people who love Jesus Christ with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength? Do we have to worry about Enron executives who are ripping off people's money and government leaders who are concerned more about feathering their own nest than they are about serving the people if they are truly in love with Jesus Christ? It's wonderful that we live in a country where America... The laws guarantee religious freedom to practice and proclaim our faith. The First Amendment says this, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of people uh, to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. The First uh, Amendment to our Constitution and so often this gets turned around. These folks came over here so there would, would never ever be a church of England. A church run by the government. But rather, the government would be based upon people who had godly values. And would establish a free nation. Governed by the internal controls of God's spirit. 
they're law-abiding citizens. We'd be a nation which is respectful of the law. Anybody ever watch Brad Stein? You gotta watch Brad Stein because he points out the ridiculousness that we go to in this country when people don't have internal controls. What good do laws, what teeth do the laws really have? I like where he said, you know, we keep passing laws and laws. Why don't we just pass a law that says it's against law to be, to, let's make crime against the law. You know what I mean? It's just it's ridiculous. People have to have those internal controls that are respecting of the law. Colossians chapter, chapter 4 and verse 5, and I, I'm going to finish with this passage here. Colossians chapter 4 in verse 5. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Church, let me close with this. We are so blessed in the nation that we live in. Let us be organic in being grassroots, in taking the values that God has given us and live it in this blessed nation that we live in. And we need to be as evangelistic as the folks who came and put their feet on this continent to begin with. To me, it, it, it's not, the answer is not found in government. The answer is not found in more political swagger in the, this party or that party. I think the answer is found in godly values and exercising our rights and our responsibilities as citizens of this country. Which, by the way, I believe the United States is probably one of the most apathetic nations as far as their, their duty uh, and, and responsibilities as a citizen of that nation. Uh, to me, when you only get 2% or 3% of the vote coming out, it's, it's just amazingly tragic. When you go to a place like Iraq where if you stick, I don't know, it's your finger, your finger or your thumb in this blue ink, you might walk out and be shot. And yet, they come and they participate as a citizen of a free nation. And so we, we should be the ones who are different. We're going to be the good stewards. We're going to be the, the wise uh, ones in the way that we act towards the world. And we're going to make the most of our opportunity. And we're going to, we're going to increase the borders of the kingdom of God. The church. Church. You're the hope for America. When the church is being what the church should be. Too many times we hear politicians at the end of their speech saying, God bless America, almost like it was command to God, and, and I hope that's not the case. When we see God bless America, it's a prayer. A prayer. One thing I've noticed as I've, as I've studied our, my history and, and early church, or early government leaders is their humbleness. Abraham Lincoln, so absolutely humble, beseeching the Lord's blessing humbly begging his forgiveness for the mistakes of a nation. This is our plea. Not our proud nationalism. That's not what I'm looking at. But our humble plea to God to bless us. Again, God bless America should be our prayer. We, his humble servants, in all that He has given us. That's our mission. It just revives me in what importance the church is in this nation that we live in, and for that matter, for the world as well. There was a visitor many years ago who came to the United States, and someone asked him his assessment of the United States, and he said, America is great because America is good. When America ceases to be a good, America will cease to be great. And I believe that's the truth. And I believe that we as the church are the grassroots movement that is going to change the current direction that is going. Also, we want to pray for your salvation. If you're not a Christian today, we've got the prayer zone out here. We encourage you to come. If you need any kind of ministry at all, the prayer team's right out there in the prayer zone. We ask that you come. Let's all stand. Let's sing.